there's one area that I think this committee ought to be able to get their arms around. And I appreciate Mr. Turkle and Mr. Oshai talking specifically about the de minimis loophole. Mr. Turkle, you talk about how this is used to allow goods used by forced labor to come to the country. You have excellent testimony. I, you didn't have a chance to speak uh, to it uh, in your just your five minutes. But I would commend the committee to look at Mr. Turkle's page 10 and 11 uh, about the abuses here and the impact by allowing two, over two million packages a day, uninspected, uh, untariffed, uh, to flow into the United States. Mr. Turkle, do you want to talk about what you might have added if you had time for your testimony? Yes, I would like to point out that um, this is a serious problem. For example, one half, of, uh, one half were shipped with zero digital data provided to U.S. Customs authorities. Could you speak one, a little closer into the microphone? Yes. You're hard to hear you. One quarter of those flagged for inspection were never inspected because the importer failed to comply with the order to hold uh, items for inspection. And then one quarter of those inspected, I'm talking about de minimis, uh, those two million packages coming to the United States, one quarter of those inspected at JFK Airport had some type of violations. So we need to look at why we have this loophole continued. One company that had been in the question is the Shane. That is fastest, it is one of the most successful Chinese companies, even though they're headquarters in, in, uh, in Singapore. Uh, the download, their uh, download of this app has surpassed already TikTok, Instagram, Twitter. So that shows that this is, this is one of the most effective tools that the Chinese entities is using by taking advantage of the de minimis rule. We need to, we need to consider looking at the possibility of changing the dollar amount. 200, uh, you mentioned, uh, right. I mentioned 2 million, but yesterday I was looking at other uh, records. Uh, the, one of the world's foremost experts on this issue, Laura, Dr. Laura Murphy, testified in Congress. She said 3 million. So that's a daily package coming right. in into the United States. That's a big loophole that we need to close. I, I, I appreciate that very much. Um, I do hope that there's an opportunity for the committee to look at this huge volume of uninspected, I mean, we're here in New York, the home of exploding uh, uh, electric bike uh, batteries. Uh, there are 800, or seven, excuse me, $799 e-bikes coming through under this loophole. And I just think it's a simple fix. It would be broadly supported on a bipartisan basis. And it's not just clothing. Mr. Oshai, you mentioned the potential use of the diminished loophole in your testimony about tires, uh, the possibility perhaps of uh, a, a company shipping tires direct to consumers uh, four at a time? Yeah, it just, it, it only makes sense. They found every loophole they could to get around, you know, our trade laws and uh, trade cases and you could get a set of t four tires shipped here, less than $800, and put them on the road, and they wouldn't be following our Department of Transportation rules either. It's, you know, it's another way of cheating our trade laws, and it's dangerous. Well, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll try and help you get back on schedule here. I'm not going to, ex to uh, uh, deal with your patience, but I think this is something that the committee needs to look at. We see companies use what uh, is called creative invoicing. That if it, you, the, what the product you're getting actually costs $800 or more, let us work with you and we'll find a way to get that invoice under $800 to be uninspected un, uh, and tariff. These are dangerous. It undercuts American business. There are actions of forced labor yeah. that come through using this loophole. And I just urge the committee to look at the testimony from our two witnesses that zero in on the de minimis, because I do think this is, you know, it, the legislation that I'm going to reintroduce would only exclude a non-market economy that's on the watch list. And that's, let's see, that's uh, China. 
Uh, and I think they should actually be excluded. It's a small signal that we're not going to be overrun, but this loophole is swallowing the exception in ways that are really detrimental to American business and the safety of American consumers. Thank you for your patience, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Blumenauer. It appears